Hello, and welcome back to The Sound of Your Significance. And today I am truly thrilled to speak with friend, client, and visionary, Jessica Saran. Jessica is a visual artist and the leader at Source and Sanctuary, a field guide to uncharted creative callings. As a visual artist, she makes images that connect others to the truth of their experiences. As a leader, she helps other artists and artistic geniuses who struggle with discovering their calling to become leaders of an international creative movement based on the power of community. Join us today as we discuss what she's up to in the world. You can access Jessica's info at www.tinyurl.com slash creative art career and listen through all the way to the end to find out about her special programs as well as my new free series that's coming out called Quick, Simple, Easy Ways to Boost Creativity Without Spending a Dime. It's going to be great. Help you unlock creative flow for all you professional artists. So let's get started. Welcome to the sound of your significance with yours truly, Jennifer Nesbitt Holt, where I help powerful and successful women like you elevate your inner vibration through the science of sound, vibrational tips, and expert interviews, which are not only magical, but scientifically practical in helping you own your own currents of intuition. I'm a leader in sound and vibrational energy, an aromatherapy practitioner, yoga instructor, and the founder of the Vibration of Intentional Creation over at jennifernesbittholt.com. Tune in weekly to discover the science behind sound and vibration to receive expansive vibrational tools, gifts, and support in exploring ancient and modern sound technology to raise your frequency so that you may impact the world. Make sure to join my email list at www.jennifernesbittholt.com for free updates and musical sound bites. And make sure to pick up a copy of the newly released Currents of Curiosity and Courage. Today, we are talking with Jessica Saran here on the Sound of Your Significance radio show. Welcome. We're so happy to have you. And can you tell us a little bit about why you're here? Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Yes. Oh, I would say I'm here for a number of reasons, but certainly because you and I both have this calling to really assist artists in figuring out how to make their work and how to bring it into the world and stay in the flow. Yeah. The flow. Oh, the flow. (laughs) (laughs) To stay in that sweet magic spot where the work just kind of happens. Right. And you have been very successful at this recently. I know you have a lot of programs that are in the work and you have a a built community, which is so exciting. And I want to talk about that later. But I think what would be great to talk about is your artistic journey in general and, Mm -hmm. you know, what... What got you to this point? Because I know it wasn't easy. No, it wasn't. (laughs) You know, it's funny you say that because I know when I first got to art school, which was such an eye-opening experience for me because I was actually a kid who grew up on a farm. I was a, a, a farm kid from rural Ontario in Canada. And I had no idea what it even meant to be an artist or what the possibilities were. And I remember I got to art school, kind of just happened, because I was always good at making things. And I was immediately confronted because I heard people telling stories about how when they made art, it was this amazing, blissful experience where time seemed to stop. And I remember thinking, I might not be in the right place because what was happening for me was art making was actually quite painful and torturous. Mm. Was that so, was that from the just the environment of the way the instructors were teaching or the critiques that were happening? What was that that was that reading probably, them? My experience would have been different had there been more talk about the creative process. But mm-hmm. even beyond that, it was that I quickly realized that art making for me was going to bring up all of my stuff. But before I had the language to talk about art as something that could be for healing or help us move towards greater consciousness, it was doing that. And it was really thrusting me into the alchemical fire. 
Yeah. And at the time, I did not know what to do with it. You know, it was all of the stuff. It was the inner critic. It was all of those voices. It was, you know, feeling self-conscious. I don't know what I'm doing. This is a luxury. It was all of that stuff that I was immediately confronted with. Oh, yeah. Of course, that's very scary. I mean, (laughs) and to not have a guide (laughs) to get you through that. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So that was, um, it was powerful. You know, I got the experience of learning how to make art. It was a traditional art school. But what I really had to do after that was find a place where we could talk about the creative process and the creative process and spirituality and healing and what was really going on. Mm. So I was very fortunate and I found a master's program where that was the case. All of that stuff was on the table all the time. Well, what made you stick it out? I mean, what made you decide, I'm going to go to graduate school for this awful experience? (laughs) It's such a good question. And I think it's something that most of my people definitely experience too. It's that pull, that constant sense that I know it's really hard, but if I'm not making it, that's even worse. Mm. Because there was something deep in me already that knew I was here to make art. I didn't know how and I didn't know how to make it easily, but I kept returning to it, even when I would put it on the back burner for sometimes a year at a time. And I would try to quit. I would try to do something else, but I kept returning. Mm. And so I realized, well, I better find a way to do this without all of the pain and agony. Yeah, good for you. I mean, that's a bit of fearlessness right there. Uh. Yeah, thank you. Fearlessness, and I think at some point you realize I have no choice, Mm. that it's just going to keep calling until I attend to it and figure it out, or I'm going to be miserable. Right. And I knew, you know, it was a different kind of misery that I would have (laughs) stepped into. I mean, I had tried all kinds of things. You know, I had worked in a factory at some point miserable. I was completely miserable in another way. And so I needed to move. I knew I needed to just move towards the fear and yeah, trust that I'd figure something out. Uh, That's beautiful. And I'm glad that you're sharing that here because you're even making me see that this is not all these artists out there that are stuck in this lack mentality first of all, they're not alone. But secondly, this must be what's happening that they feel out of control and they feel they have no way to push past it. So I'm glad you're here talking about the emotional aspect of it. Mm, It's my favorite thing to talk about. So it's my pleasure. (laughs) Yeah. Well, so you found you had mentioned you found this group or this program that was open to talking about the deeper creative process. What was that like for you, having that support all of a sudden? Oh, it was incredible. Such a deep sense of relief. It was so normalizing. You know, that was it. It was, the program was actually called Arts and Consciousness. And so while in, in a lot of ways doing my undergraduate degree was amazing because I was surrounded by other artists. Mm -hmm. When I went to grad school, I was surrounded by other artists who also were interested in spirituality and personal development, you know, and who could really hang on all of those different levels. And it didn't just have to be about the product, yeah, right? the output of mm-hmm. the creative process. Yeah. So yeah, that was, I, I, I honestly don't know if I would still be making art without it. Uh, you know, one, one never knows, but it was that transformative for me. And that was in Canada? It's actually in Berkeley. Okay. Yeah, yeah. in Berkeley, California. Oh, wonderful that you had that because, oh, you've come so far. And I, I love what you're doing in the world because this is exactly, we talked about this before we got on, that this is the stuff that artists need to have to support them. And at no matter what stage and that, you know, that creative calling, I know you use that term a lot, creative calling is so important and you've already talked about how that was for you as far as you had no choice (laughs) and and that tells me you know on the holistic side that tells me you were very energetically in tuned and i can only imagine the results you bring with your clients so (laughs) well let's uh let's talk a little bit about the creative calling if you're you're open for that because um well first tell people jessica because 
this is what's unique about you. You're mm-hmm. not just a visual artist. You're not just a painter, a creator of the canvas, right? Or the tangible. You've started creating programs that are so helpful for pulling people out of this. And I want to hear you talk about that. I want sure. all these people to hear you talk about that <laughs> because there's more, there's more people. Hang on. Here's Jessica. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think for me, what I also, what I realized was that I had this really strong interest in the creative process and I was also really interested in other people's experience. And I think it's a lot of the artists I work with are also really highly sensitive people who are hyper aware Mm. of the world around them and what's going on for other people. And so at some point I couldn't not want to bring that into my art making I would call it my art making at the time. So what it looked like was I realized, okay, well, here's a gallery and I can show my work there and that's great. But I actually want to find other ways to bring my work into the world. I really want to engage with community. And so I started, you know, finding ways. I created these kind of experiments where I'm basically going to plot myself down in public. I'm going to share some aspect of how I'm feeling and what my experience is and invite others to do the same. And then I started making art based on those conversations, based on what people were telling me. Wow, that's powerful. (laughs) Yeah. And I started to see that this was also benefiting others, not just myself. Mm -hmm. And so there was that. And then there's always this part of me that's wanted to be a teacher of some sort. But I never wanted to teach technique or how to paint or how to draw. I always knew if if I could teach anything, it would be how to move through the creative process. You know, and so I started just finding a way to put all of this together. My interest in the creative process, other people's experiences, you know, how they could make art, how they could be creative too. And I just started kind of mapping it out because I really like also the idea of how can we create a map or a guide so that the next person doesn't have to totally reinvent the wheel, but can take what we've discovered and then go further. I like that. I like that. Because, you know, the creative process, and I don't know if you agree, it can sometimes be like the stages of grief. I mean, it's really having to face face the anger or face the fear or the sorrow of, you know, that didn't work out and what I imagined hasn't come to fruition. And um, so I love that you're doing that. So tell us more. Tell us more. This is great stuff. Yeah, I think I love that you framed it that way, the stages of grief. The metaphors that usually come to me are around giving birth. Okay. Though I've never had had children, I always think of, well, if you're making a piece of art, you're essentially giving birth to something. Mm -hmm. And, And everyone in some capacity is bringing something new into the world. So if I can start framing things for people in terms of, well, what is it actually, what's required for us to really bring something new into the world? And at some point, we're probably screaming and cursing the person who got us pregnant and wishing we had made a different choice. And oh my God, what was I thinking? Right. No, you did this to me. You did this to me. Bastard. <laughs> I love it. And then it's not pretty and it's messy and it's ugly. And I, I had learned when I was going out into public and working with people that the more I could just normalize my experience and just admit what it was to be human, what it was to have a feeling that I didn't want to admit, you know, to be the person who could say, you know what, I'm in the studio and it sucks right now and I kind of hate myself and I don't want to be here. And as soon as I started sharing that, other people could so identify. And it became less that, oh, well, there must be something wrong with me versus, oh, maybe there's just something to this. Maybe Mm -hmm. I can actually embrace this, see what's there, and hopefully just keep moving forward. Wow. Powerful stuff. Mm, Thank you. Yeah, so I feel like really all the work I'm doing now and all of these different programs is essentially this, helping people with different parts of the creative process, be that creating a piece of art, creating an exhibition, creating community, you know, creating your own creative business. I'm just kind of helping them to say, okay, you know, here's, here's a path. Here's what to expect. 
Hmm. You know, let's now let's dig in. Let's go through this together. And you know, artists and I might be stereotyping here, but a lot of artists, you know, we're not trained to go out and market ourselves. I mean, school doesn't prepare us for that. It prepares us to create, get the end product, make sure it's good art, you know. And that's a very scary thing without someone holding your hand. Or a lot of times I know people sell out and they get stuck with the wrong agent or, you know, there's there's some really bad stuff that can happen too, just like with musicians. Um, so this is, I like it because you're bringing in a spiritual aspect of it and a very humanized experience mm. and, and not just, you know, hey, here's the nuts and bolts, do it, see you later. Yeah. yeah, and I love that you said the spiritual part because it really is all about how can I help empower people. Just like when you head down a spiritual path, you start realizing I'm creating my entire reality. Mm-hmm. We can also learn to actually create art careers and create our creative callings from this empowered place versus, oh God, please, like, can you, can you show my art? Or, you know, I'm fighting with all of these other artists for what feels like a limited spot, a number of spots, or just all of that that's just yucky to me. And I think most of us don't want to do it for perfectly good reasons, because it doesn't feel good. Hmm. So I'm really trying to find ways. How can this feel good? How Mm -hmm. can this empower you? How can creating an art career be as creative as making a piece of art, where Mm. you actually feel inspired and juicy and lit up in the process? And you're helping you know, going back to the spiritual and the vibrational aspect of it. If art is being created out of angst or fear or, you know, anger, and I know it depends on our message, (laughs) but that is putting a pulse out into the world. Mm -hmm. And this is wonderful to hear because you're elevating the world by helping artists, and then yet, then they are elevating the vibration of what we're feeling, what we're seeing, because it is impacting. And um, mm. yeah, I don't, I don't really have much more to say about that other than that's crucial. I feel. Well, it just gave me chills when you said that. <laughs> I think, yeah, you're, you're right. It is. It's, it's, and it's this ripple effect too. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and one of the things that I've discovered is part of my calling is actually to create leaders, to create other artists who can become leaders and take their process and their work into community so that ripple effect just continues. Because all the artists I work with have some desire to be of service, mm-hmm. some desire to bring healing. So the more tools they have, the more artists who get to do that, like you said, it just keeps moving outward and it's such an amazing thing I agree I agree and it's freeing I mean there's there's this level of um pushing past it's it's starting and I know just from me being a painter and it's like being on the other side of the glass banging no one hearing you and then you finally just break through and it's just amazing the way you feel the way you live the way you create Um, you know, I'm curious with your clients and who comes to you, do you find, are a lot of them coming to you, you know, internally kicking and screaming saying, I don't want to do this, but I know I need to do this. Or are they pretty open? There's usually a lot of resistance though. Many of them feel like they're at the point where I just have to do it now. If I don't do it now, I never will. So they're, they know they're at a threshold But the part that comes up, because one of the first things I work with most of them on is, okay, before you can take your work out, before you can help others, you really have to make your own authentic work. And that means you're really going to have to speak your truth. And so a lot of them right away, they know, it's, you know, we know when that stuff is approaching and the resistance comes with it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's kind of a double-edged thing because they have to really fully commit and want it and say yes. But there is always that level of fear and I'm not sure what I'm going to have to change in my life if I move in this direction, but I know I'll have to change some things. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Now, I, I know with artists, it's, 
there can be a lot of ego involved too and that push and that pull. And then the work can have its own influence back on the artist because I think sometimes it's easier to have so many other people visually influence our work. And um, is that a big struggle to help them see and find their their authentic creation or are you seeing that manifest pretty quickly? It doesn't actually take that long. And part okay. of it is because the way that most of my clients are artists who tend to work really intuitively and automatically. Okay. And so what we actually have to do is just really connect to their intuition and what feels good and what feels do- when what doesn't feel good. Okay. It's, it, it actually ends up being that simple. simple. Once we can cut through their, I, their shoulds, I should do this in a painting or when I'm working. And as soon as I can give them permission to say, what do you actually want to do? And can you just do that? The more that they, I give them permission to just follow those nudges and impulses and the threads and then leave aside everything that doesn't fit into that, the work, the, the most authentic work just naturally starts to emerge. Mm. It's really, it, it's astounding to me every time. Mm, beautiful. And you talk a lot about community and, mm. and helping artists, and, and we've broached on that a little bit already, but having the work give back in a way. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at what stage are you helping them see that their art is bigger? I actually don't have to help them very much. In terms of, I'm always surprised at how, I think it's just because they have a heart for it. At some point, as they're making their own work, these ideas start coming in about how they could start doing a workshop or sharing this with others. It's this, it ends up being this really organic process. Or they've, they've, a lot of them even have that sense before they even start working with me. Mm. So they've already kind of identified in some way, oh, I would love to teach others. I would love to work in community. So it's usually the seed of it is usually there. So you're just pulling the lid off of it. Mm-hmm. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. 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 Well, is there anything you'd like to share about the programs you have right now? And I'll uh, share with everyone that I know Jessica um, has a community and she also has a free gift for you if you're interested called Three Secrets That All Successful Artists Should Know. Mm-hmm. And or do or artists know, right? <laughs> Let's take that should out of there. Sorry for that, Jess. Three Secrets <laughs> That All Successful Artists Know. I got it. And you can access that at um, www.tinyurl.com slash creative art career. Yes. Um, so once they get on that list, you know, what happens? They get the free gift. What, what parts of, the, of you are they seeing and what parts of your program are accessible to them? The first thing I invite and encourage everyone to do is to get their ass into a program that I call Keep Your Ass in the Studio. And that's my, that's my intro program. It's really a three month long deep dive into, okay, I've got to show up for myself and I've got to show up for the work and everything else that's a part of my creative calling, the exhibitions, the way I want to move it out into the world, all that will happen once I get that foundation in place. Because a lot of the artists I work with, they are struggling with all of this internal stuff that stops them from making their art consistently. Mm-hmm. So that's really step one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which is huge. <laughs> it's really huge. It's and, huge and it's so amazing how our whole life starts to shift around us when we do that. Right. Just right. that starts to shift so much. Right. Oh, I love that. Well, you and I um, have a similar path in, <laughs> in the way that we work with artists. Mm-hmm. And it's similar, a little different. And uh, Jessica, for everyone, and I'm interested, by the way, in taking Keep Your Ass in the Studio because I, as you know, Jessica, I took um, a year off and had this. <laughs> I've been ta- I've been telling this story more and more and more about the loss of my portfolio, mm. and 
that in itself, and I've been talking about it actually in my own programs and having it relate back to the themes that I'm working with with my clients. And that has been truly freeing for me because um, it brought back the memory of a woman in Colorado, in Breckenridge, that I walked into a gallery and she had all of her work in the gallery at that time. And I wish I could remember her name. But she went on to tell me this story. This is years ago, probably about 12 to 15 years ago. And she had lost all of her work in a flood. And (laughs) it was when it was in Houston and a hurricane had come. And she had had all of her stuff in storage at the time because she had gone to travel and do stuff and came back to find all of her work had just, you know, what she had in galleries survived. But as I've been telling the story, I thought about that. And I thought about what um, you've already talked about as birth and rebirth. Mm. And because I'm walking into this gallery and I'm seeing all these new beautiful pieces of art that have been created and um, very brave of her to just jump right back into it and mm. not let it hold her back. So there can be so much fear that we have, you know, as artists. And I can think of so many ways or excuses, like many others, not to go into the studio. I can blame my children. <laughs> yes. Oh. Which, that's a valid excuse at times. <laughs> but totally. it's... um. It's it's great to hear that you've got that program because it's almost an accountability program. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> right, right. And I know um, I'd love to hear your take because we have different approaches and you've taken my Creative Life series, your Feed Your Inner Artist series. And um, as you know, I'm also a holistic healer, so I take a completely unique approach to helping artists come into creative flow And I'm curious, you know, what the inner whisper was for you that prompted you to, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it was really, you know, I know how to make art and I know how to show up, but I was at this edge where I wanted to make new work and I was really ready for something new to emerge. And I had been kind of, you know, while I've been developing a lot of these programs, it's like you said, it's always this dance of how much time am I actually getting to the studio? And I, for about a year, I had been kind of keeping a painting practice hobbling along enough, but it wasn't really giving me that time to really get in there and start exploring and figure out what was the new thing that really wanted to come through. And so when I came across your program, I really felt like, oh, this is my time, I knew that I really needed something that would support me in nurturing my practice and whatever new thing wanted to come through. Mm, I love that. I mean, because you're seasoned in your career, you know, you're successful in your career. And I know when people get to a certain point, they feel like, Mm -hmm. well, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because it's worked for me. You know, yes. and I, it's gotten me to this point of success. So I love, I love to hear your feedback on that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give, we, we can talk a little bit about the adventure of it all, but was this technique new for you? Almost everything about it was really new for me. And I just want to say something in regards to your last comment, because I really feel like I hadn't seen programs out there that really were designed for the professional artist in this way. Okay. And I think that's that's what I love so much about it is I knew I didn't need to go back and take a class about some other painting technique. Right. You know, or get an art profess like a quote unquote professor, you know, to talk to me. It, that's not what I needed. I needed something that was going to really nurture me in a different way as a professional artist and I knew how much you understood that and were honoring it. Oh, and so thank that you. was yeah, that was really, really attractive for me. Great. And done on purpose. <laughs> I know it was. You named it so beautifully. I love that about you. <laughs> oh, man. So you, you talked about what you were hard at work manifesting. You know, you were on the cusp of all this balancing act of programs and creation of a new body of work. Um, 
you know, what was the most surprising or transformative thing that came up for you when taking this program? And you can get into a little bit more of the the nuts and bolts of it if you'd like. Well, I won't give too much away. Okay. But but for me, the the program is so nurturing. And I think that as somebody, you know, in my own career, especially I'm I'm giving and I'm supporting other people all of the time. Your program has been so supportive for me. I feel like I'm being poured into in a way that's really filling me up and create carving out this really special time. This is just my time now. And I'm using your exercises and your prompts as a way to really bookmark that this is my time. And this is how I'm going to start it with the creative life exercises. And I'm going to let that really, it puts me into the zone, which is exactly where I need to be. Uh, You know, where I can, right, I can kind of stop like, oh, no, no, this is not about everything else and everyone else's needs right now. This is about what wants to happen in my creative process. I love that. So you, you are feeling that vibrational shift happening. Okay. Absolutely. And it's, it's through your exercises and it's also just through you. Like I just love your voice and your energy. It does. It just feels so nurturing. And I can, I love too that it's shifting something, but it doesn't feel cerebral to me. I'm not trying to shift something. I'm not putting a lot more energy in. I'm just letting it do the work on me. Oh, I love that. Which is also such a gift because I'm doing so much all the time. <laughs> anyway, you know, I don't need another course to do. I just need something that can serve me and, and feed me. And that's what it's doing. <clears throat> and excuse me again, everyone, I have a cold. But, um, you know, in the journey of my work with uh, vibrational healing and, you know, just helping people in general, I love hearing you say that. And I, I love being reminded of it, too, in that my work truly does does go about in the way that I approach, whether in person or working with someone online or in a program like this, is that it's all about giving you permission to let go and receive Mm. because you can get to that deeper knowledge and wisdom within yourself to take over and it doesn't have to be forced. And it, and a lot of us don't feel that that's possible. So th- yeah, it's huge. And, and I'll just come out and say a lot of people that I work with um, sound, and that's a huge component of what I do in all of my programs and in all of my work. And it's been an integral part of my life. So it's, it's so refreshing to hear that mirrored back. Mm. Because when the intention's there, and then you're putting it out there, of course, you hope it's received as such. And it is, and it's, it's such a gift. And I love that the sound, the way you use sound in it, it just gets to wash over me. Ah. Right, so it is, and you've done it so beautifully where I don't feel like I took on another course, another thing to do. Good, it, good. It feels like, oh, I get to do this and be filled up. Okay, I'm so <laughs> glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that. I know, because I can be a course junkie also. <laughs> Oh, I've got to learn that. I've got to learn that. I've got to learn that. And I, for artists, you know, we have to be active in the studio or we have to be active. I know the people I work with, it's a little bit different that I'm not only working with um, visual artists, you know, I'm working with writers and filmmakers and photographers. So it's kind of all over the board, but it's all about the same thing. And that's getting into the flow and they don't have time. They don't. I mean, they're, they're already bound by their projects. It's getting them through that and helping them still create the best of themselves that they can. Mm-hmm. So beautiful feedback. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, so what's next for you? I mean, you've, you've come to this place that I've been able to watch some of the evolution, and I think it's beautiful. Um, what's on your agenda if, and it might be a secret, I know one thing, but I won't say anything unless you do. (laughs) Yeah, there's another new big thing. Um, I can't say too much about yet, but I'm really interested in, I mean, metaphorically creating space for people, but literally creating space where we get to really be in an environment that gives us the time and all of the nourishment and the support we need to really get some of our work done. So I'm 
Yeah, it's in the early stages, but that there's something along those lines that's that's coming. Okay, and I really I had talked about this with you offline, but um, I'm excited to be a guinea pig if you need me. <laughs> I Yay! Do, do need you. <laughs> Well, um, I feel so blessed to have you here. And, you know, for everyone listening, I'm strongly encouraging them to connect with you to really push past that uh, star. I, I, hey, I, it almost seems cliche, but it's, you know, that starving artist mentality. But it's the place of lack. It's the place of where we forget about our capabilities and what we can do in this world. And I love the entry-level program, Keep Your Ass in the Studio. I love it. <laughs> and I think there's great things from there. You know, if someone can connect with you and get on your email list. And, you know, guys, Jessica has the most beautiful uh, weekly emails that come out that are these wonderful reminders. So no matter where you are in your career, I think it's really good stuff to listen to. And I love how um, you mirror it back to life experience and what's happening. I think that's very important. Stories, you know? It is. Thank you so much. Yeah, one of my favorite sayings of late is art is an act of becoming. Mm -hmm. Because in my experience, yeah, we're making art, but this the art is teaching us who we're here to be. Right, and it's, right. it spills out into every aspect of our life. Yeah, and I, and I know you've yeah. named, I think, one of your programs something similar. Um, but it's... It's uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that I think you're doing, and I think it's needed because mm. uh, I I was you know I used to work with professional people who had kind of their own following, and people would be like, well, why are you going to work with a leader? I mean, they're already there; they've already arrived, and it's like, whoa, those are the people who probably need the most support because they have to be elevated and you know, stay in this position to have others, you know, emulate what they're seeing in their leader. And oh my gosh, like how that's what's wrong with the world is those people need more support. Uh, well, of course you said that. <laughs> exactly what you're doing. But, and I love that. I just, I, I love that you're helping to fill up the professionals, the leaders, the people who are doing it, but who really do, we do, we need support mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. We need people to help take us to the next level so that we can keep elevating our people. Right, right. I mean, and your creation of these leaders and pulling them, I mean, because it happens quick, I think, and I don't know if you see it, but when someone comes into their own, no. I mean, what manifests after that, it's, it's mind-blowing, I think. I mean, I've seen it happen for myself. I know you've probably seen it happen for yourself. Uh, so yeah, it's beautiful. And to have the support along for the ride. Artists, we got you covered. We do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here today. Any last words? Any last thoughts? Oh, just thank you, too. Thank you for doing the work you're doing. Thank you, Jessica. It's been a pleasure. And I'm going to put the links up on my site for everyone. This is also going to be up on iTunes and YouTube. So everybody make sure to leave us a, some five-star reviews as well as a written review on iTunes and then a thumbs up on YouTube. And Jessica will also have access to this video to share with her audience. So thank you again for being on The Sound of Your Significance. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to The Sound of Your Significance. If you're a professional artist looking to feed your inner creative, pick up my new free training, Quick, Simple, Easy Ways to Boost Creativity Without Spending a Dime, at bit.ly slash quick, simple, easy. In this series, you'll learn seven mistakes frequently made by professional artists, the 11 benefits to unlocking creative flow, and the smarter, faster, cheaper tools to feed your inner artist. If you enjoyed the show today, please leave a review in iTunes and give us a thumbs up over on YouTube. If you're looking to overcome creative blocks, pick up your free Overcome Creative Blocks kit at bit.ly slash overcome creative blocks. Thanks for tuning in.